Rhythm to me has always been a focus, especially when I'm playing in a competition. For me, when I get quick in my transition, a lot of things go wrong real fast. So that one seems to be the constant. A lot has to do with tempo. Just committing to the shot. I'm a big feel guy. Turn your body and club three together. Max Homer, six foot one, 180 pounds, and an out and out flusher. He went from NCAA college star to PGA Tour player to nearly losing his card to winning on tour and now becoming a perennial contender and honestly, one of the leading Americans in the game. His manner is easy, his golf swing is gorgeous, it's simple, it's powerful. Max just seems destined for more and more success. Start this up to left and it's moving a little right. I think this is wonderful here. That is ideal right there. One thing to realize about Max Homer is he remains true to what he has at his disposal. Now, he has very long arms and he uses that to create a big wide swing arc. So because of that, he sets up to that where a lot of golfers with driver in hand, you may see perhaps a little more tilt over. Well, Max stands up to the ball a little bit more. So you see here a little less flexion through the knees and certainly a little less flexion through the hips. And he does a beautiful job of operating around that. I can imagine him at times almost looking like he could hit this driver straight even if he was on ice skates because the legs are just so quiet underneath him. Now you've heard about early extension and spine angles. Well, if you want to get rid of that, Put this golf swing on a loop and watch what Max does. There he is at address, there's the spine angle. So as he starts away, there is nothing out of the ordinary. Club face looking at the golf ball, just rotates around there and look at those long arms. No hand action whatsoever. And right there, look at this relationship he has set up. See the face of the club and the spine angle? They are almost parallel. So that proves no hand action whatsoever. He is just moving around his address. From there, he and his coach, Mark Blackburn, have worked on Max getting his arm a little bit more across the chest at the top. And you can see there how that lead arm sort of sits across the chest. And once again, look at the face of the club, how it's matching the lead arm. Just so simple. This is absolutely flawless. Now from here, eyes behind the ball, the body unwinds, he's turning around his center, the lower body is leading, arms swinging out because he likes to fade the ball some. The drawer of the golf ball, if you think like a McElroy, may have that lead arm more under his shoulder. Well, Max swings it out some more and that's going to facilitate a bit more leftward path, allowing him to fade the golf ball. And when he does, it is hit. Down to impact, everything very simple, arms straightening, club right through the back of the golf ball and this shaft angle right here he gets that handle as low as anybody in the game reminiscent of a young Bobby Jones and that is the reason why Max is just such a flusher of the golf ball nothing manipulated very simple from there it's freewheeling up into a balanced follow-through every single time and you can set your wristwatch on a powerful driving fade Jim, I'll never get tired of watching that golf swing. Just absolutely beautiful. Mm. Good tee shot, sitting up the salt. Does he live on loose here? There's your answer. Oh boy, he took a rip at that one, Frank. That is hammered. That might be the first one today we've seen him aim right and try to turn over. Exactly. That shows you the maturation of his game, isn't it? Here is Max Homer with a fairway medal in hand. And don't mind the ball position. He likes to go low when pressured and just stay tuned for impact because you will see how low this ball is launched. One thing I do want you to be mindful of, though, is that if you want to hit quality golf shots, you have to get a good connection with the ground and certainly have to get a good connection with a golf club. Now, that group of Max Homers, well, it's about as perfect as I could imagine. Now, your thumbs and forefingers, they form what look like an upside-down V. Both hands, left and right hand. And now, watch that V with Max, how it basically just extends up 
to the right shoulder. Both hands complementing each other, both hands matching each other. And because he is just so neutral and standard, I feel like that is a kick-on effect to keeping that club face so very square. So as he moves away now, he's got those long arms, and you'll see a very centralized, very quiet pivot, no hand action, because he knows that club face is just so square. I love this position. Look at the, basically the comparison between the hips rotating behind him and the extension of those long arms and the club away from him. That sets up, in my opinion, a beautiful backswing position at the top. As we take him onward, you'll see the hips continue to wind, see the arms just follow and remain extended, and right there at the top, a couple things to look at. Right hip behind him, pressure into the back foot, eyes trained in behind the golf ball a little bit. But more importantly, I want you to imagine he is standing inside of a doorway. Now, in my opinion and my experience, every great striker has always reached out to the top right-hand corner of the doorway. Because if you're there, you have your hands out to your side. And as your body begins to move down to the target, you can retain width in the arm swing and get the arms back in front of you very easily. So watch for that now in transition. The low body drives, the arms swing down, and look at the full extension of the lead arm there, and look at this beautiful relationship here. Trail elbow right down by his right side, and so now the arms are in front of him. Now impact is all but guaranteed. He just has to keep moving. I stay behind the ball, everything beautifully level, and let's stop there for a second. This, screenshot this and copy it. Look at that left arm, through hand, through club, absolutely perfect. Look at that trail foot just rolled in. You can see the pressure into the lead foot. Look at how the eye line is just followed into the back of the golf ball. And remember the launch angle? Well, check out this thing over here. That ball is launched low because he's just on top of it so much. This is just gorgeous stuff, and it's a reason why, Max, you can set your wristwatch on this guy. Into the follow-through, does not try and manipulate anything. Look at the hips rotate, the right shoulder drives through, those long arms following the action, and balanced every single time. This is flush central. Max Homa with a second. Oh, seriously. Like he dropped it out of the blimp. Oh, this is pretty. It's cutting left to right. It's right at. What a shot by Homa. In full show off mode, Max Homa. Yeah, he's popped up. To strike an iron well, you need a few things to happen. First off, there has to be a somewhat downward angle of attack through the golf ball. Secondly, you need to get the leading edge underneath the golf ball. Now, a couple things Max Homer does will certainly help you to learn that. First off, you need to understand levels of the golf swing. And secondly, a good connection with the ground will facilitate that. We talked about the connection with a club, that beautiful grip he has. But the ground, look at his trail foot. That is sort of perpendicular to the target line, and the lead foot is turned out a quarter turn or so, and that will allow the body to move through and move forward and unwind properly through contact. So very important to position those feet well. But equally as important, perhaps even more so, is understanding levels in your golf swing. So there is basically a horizontal line through the button on the top of Max Homer's cap. Now you will see a little upward movement going back and certainly a whole lot more downward movement coming down and through. Let's bear that in mind. So again, beautiful grip, good ball position, beautiful feet, Max is set up. As he swings away, you'll see those long arms just extend, no excess hand action, no rolling of the forearms, just a rotation around the core. Huge extension here in the arms. I mean, that is gorgeous there. As he continues to go, 
you'll see the right hip continue to wind behind him. And as the left shoulder works under the chin, you see that gentle, gentle, ever so gentle raising up of the head. Arms out to his side. But here is the magic move now. As we work downward into transition, you're going to see a downward movement and you will see him get a lot lower than that initial red line. So we start him down. You'll see the lower body travel forward and watch as that happens. You see how he sinks down into the posture and where he is now, the button on the cap is well below where it was at address. As he approaches impact, you'll see the lower body unwind, turn open. He gets even lower there. That is gorgeous. Now there's pressure on the ground. He's beautifully into his spine angles. And from there now, because the job is done, you're going to see the body push upward and follow through into this gorgeous free-flowing follow-through. See how the foot is rolled outward some, a result of that foot position, but the body is unwound, the levels have changed, and he is up into that beautiful balanced follow-through every single time. Let's pass forward to the sixth. Well, Max Soma, he's one of the few players making a move today, already three under through his first five holes. Shot. Look how straight he hits his irons. Oh, wow. Did he? How did that stop? Fantastic shot there from Max Holman. Here is Max with a wedge in his hand. And now, as you're hitting wedges, I want you to keep this as a model because if we let him run, you will see the whole action is unhurried. There's no excess change of pace even in that area there. He's not racing into his downswing. He's not trying to overhit this wedge. It's all about distance control, which is a function of club speed and ball contact. So bear that in mind, just like Max Homer does. Now, the way I believe you can try to do this is something that Max Homer does beautifully well. Imagine for a minute that he is standing in the middle of a clock face with 12 above his head, nine off to his right-hand side, three over here, six down here, and so forth. Now, when he swings back, you're going to see the arms not race to a full turn. You'll see them somewhere work into about this 11 o'clock area. So again, with the big white arms, he starts back. There's no club face manipulation. And he just allows himself to turn around the center of this clock face. There's nine o'clock, arms extended. Now, all the way up to the cross where he stops, again, this is no stretching. This is no trying to hit the wedge really far. This is about precision. So you see the arms out to his side there. That's gorgeous. He's not trying to hit this wedge far. He's looking for quality contact and speed control. Now, from there, it's going to be very easy to get the arms back down to the 6 o'clock area, right back in front of his body. Low body leads, arms all the way down, Bang, look at that, arms in front of the body, left arm firm down that left side. Once again, this is a model. Now as he swings through, you will see the arms swing a little farther through, but again, he's not trying to over accelerate here. That follow through that's longer than 12 o'clock, it's not because he's tried to get there, it's because the velocity, the momentum of the club has carried him through. But very importantly, carried him through to a balanced follow through. The tempo and the rhythm seemingly never changes. Wow, that's so good. Now, Max. Looks like he just went through the V of that tree. <laughs> this is what I was expecting to see him hit it. Feels like a really, really, really nice shot. Is this going to fall? No way. One of the finest finesse shots I've seen all week. It's a very good fortune right now. He's Crenshaw smooth. Doesn't look like Ben, but it's smooth like Ben. Wow, that is a nice shot. Landing in between the bunker and the whole location. You couldn't do it much better than that. 